Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. It's been another busy period on the domestic and international energy front. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the new link between renewables and peace and security, as well as efforts locally to put a lid on rising fuel prices. Hi Terence. Oh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine has crystallized thinking globally around the energy transition. Yes, it's all about acceleration now. You know, there was a concern that this could derail the transition as people scrambled to secure coal, oil and gas to replace um, the Russian oil, coal and gas. And that is happening in parallel. But I think there's a strong link, especially in Western countries now, that's now developed between energy independence, peace and security and the renewable energy transition. So there's a big focus on really accelerating in places like jurisdictions like the US, definitely Europe, very, very big push to uh, accelerate the renewable energy transition. And uh, in many other parts of the world, developing and developed countries. So that's a, a big theme. It was a big theme of a gathering in uh, Germany this week, the Berlin Energy Transition Dialogue meeting. There was a lot of discussion around the energy transition and the link to peace and security. Uh, we know there's, there's accelerated efforts to wean, for instance, Germany uh, off Russian gas, uh, the major consumer of Russian gas. The energy economy is entirely integrated with Russian gas and they wanted to reduce that consumption uh, by 30% by the end of the year and within two years basically have got rid of the, uh, ga Russian gas from the, the energy system. That will obviously mean uh, imports from elsewhere, so gas will continue to feature, but it was very clear that they wanted to really push ahead with um, wind, solar where they can, and then green hydrogen. So these are very big themes that have emerged for the, the developed world, and in particular the West as, this, uh, as they stare down Russia after the invasion of re Ukraine. What does this mean for South Africa? South Africa, we're in a sweet spot with regard to the energy transition. We have the triumvirate uh, needed. We need, we've got the wind, the so sun, and the land. And those are the three components that you need. And then for the green economy, obviously, you also need water. That's where we have a slight weakness. But a lot of green hydrogen prospects are going to be built around desalinated water. But we really do have an opportunity to really accelerate. We know we need to because we've got this perpetual load shedding. Um, and the best way out of this load shedding is really to accelerate the cheapest form of new electrons into the system, which is solar and wind, and then to find ways of balancing that. Now, there is a lot of discussion about accelerating gas, extending coal, uh, adding new nuclear. I think those are red herrings. I think really it should be about the embracing the energy transition, fundamentally as our energy security and energy, energy independence policy, but also as our industrial policy. I think there's a huge opportunity to build new industries that are sustainable, green industries, especially around green hydrogen, uh, that can export and replace those coal exports that we need a replacement for. We know we are doing very well in our balance, uh, uh, balance of trade at the moment because of high commodity prices, but this is the new commodity and we've got an opportunity to produce it cheaper than they can in many other areas. And, you know, it was quite uh, disconcerting to see that others were signing deals with Germany around supplying green hydrogen, particularly Australia, and we are sitting on our hands in th this regard when we've got all the necessary components to compete and we're closer to the European market in terms of that. But we also need it for our own energy independence. I mean, talking about raising the levels of imported gas does not in improve our energy independence. We've seen what can happen very quickly with this conflict between uh, Ukraine and Russia uh, to that energy independence and makes you really, really vulnerable. So South Africa really has to take this as a signal uh, of accelerating its energy transition and then integrating its foreign, its industrial uh, and its economic policies very much around that. There are concerns about new dependencies, particularly in critical minerals. Yes, that's a big theme. The International Energy Agency's mandate uh, has been expanded. Now, it was really built about around oil security. That's why International Energy Agency was developed after the, uh, during the oil crisis of the 1970s. And it played that role. Now we see they released a number of oil stocks. Their member countries released those 
to try and put a cap on these rising uh, prices. And they've now asked and have received uh, approval from their members, which are really the developed countries, to expand their mandate to look at critical minerals because there's now a big acceptance that we need to accelerate the energy transition that involves wind, solar, and electric mobility, for instance. These are built around uh, several minerals that are uh, in supply and are mined in very many countries of the world. It's not as, you know, as concentrated as oil and gas was, but they are in difficult jurisdictions and in territories where governments have sometimes authoritarian t uh, tendencies. So there's a big focus now around, uh, people talk about battery minerals, but it's not just battery minerals. It's all sorts of minerals that are going to be need, needed for the energy transition, copper a big one that uh, you need to put in just about every electrical system. We know about lithium, but we've also got as South Africa a number of these minerals, including platinum group metals, uh, which, uh, which are going to be part of this energy transition, are part of this energy transition. But we've also got others like vanadium that we need to be accelerating our own, uh, uh, one, having a critical minerals roadmap and identifying which critical minerals we can we need for our own economy that we may need to import and which we can supply to the world. And we've got a lot of them. And the problem is that we've just had a very, very unstable and uncertain environment, which means that our exploration and development in the mining sector, particularly around these minerals, has really stalled. And we're really not replenishing even the ones we, we have, the, the platinum group metals. We're not, we're not seeing the, the, ro the, the road uh, into the future around mining these minerals and making sure that we can supply the world. We know that at the moment, Russian platinum group metals is difficult because there's, a sa there's sanctions. So we should be the ones stepping up as South Africa and Southern Africa and really uh, moving into that gap. We are to a point, but really it's the future pipeline, the exploration and development. It's very weak. Uh, we're seeing a lot of share buybacks <laughs> by the mining companies. We're seeing a l very high dividend payments. I would like to see some more exploration and development activity and serious spend around that. In a separate but linked development, we also see South Africa taking some steps to mitigate the pressure at the pumps. Yes, you know, uh, this is a big immediate concern. The, the fallout has already been felt, I think, in record fuel prices at the pump at the moment, over 21 rand a litre here in Johannesburg. And the outlook for April was, was going was that it's going to go up even further into new record levels. We saw in the February budget that the government was responsive in putting a freeze on fuel levies, but uh, that really hasn't stopped us rising uh, to these record levels. So now the, the next step has been, a two, it's a two-stage strategy really from what I can see. The first stage is to uh, reduce the fuel level by 1 Rand 50 from next week. So we, we we're expecting around a two rand um, increase in the, at the pump, but maybe this will be enough to mitigate that, uh, that increase and we may see a sort of flat sort of petrol price, I hope, for April. That will be held for two months and that will be paid for by selling uh, strategic crude r reserves, about six billion rand. And then there's more to come from about June. That this is more thinking and there's some interesting uh, around the basic fuel price formula, but also around how we treat 93 octane, uh, really maybe moving into a much more deregulated market there. So those are, that is, I think, welcome relief for uh, motorists immediately, but um, at least there's also more thinking to come. We know that the tax element of fuel has risen massively over the last decade, and uh, this has sharpened demand and looking at really how we can do it, but obviously where you lose revenue, you have to make it up. So initially through the selling of oil stocks, and then we'll have to see how they navigate the future. So these are temporary measures, and hopefully, uh, you know, the, the next two months, and uh, then going into June, there will be a better visibility around uh, uh, oil and gas markets generally in the world, and, and maybe prices will come under better control. They move quite a, quite a lot on a daily basis, depending on what uh, President Putin says or what happens in Ukraine, there's, there's, there's sharp movements. But there is a trend that's downward and hopefully this sort of short-term relief and then coupled with some structural changes to come 
will offer some much needed relief to very hard pressed consumers in South Africa. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.